cheating on you again. This is the very last wheel. Uh, shoot, I already did this one. So I already did the top side of this when it was sitting over there, or when it was sitting on the car. So first thing I always do on tires is denib. I denib the front and back. I've got my source garage rotatey thingy for the tires. And I've changed on this here. I used to do dedicated wheel coatings because I was enamored by them like we all are. And I no longer use those. I just put the same stuff I'm putting on the paint, the car, on the wheels, and I find that we get much better performance from a dirt perspective, brake dust perspective, the ability to clean. It's just a just a better better option to use that. So we're doing crystal serum light topped with, I'm gonna do two coats of EXO. I'm also prepping the tires while I'm doing this, including taking the little tire nibs off. And uh, this is the fourth one. So like I said, I've been cheating on you a little bit here. And what I've been doing also, these, these ones drive me crazy, these little ones here in inside the bead area. I've been using my little angled pliers here, needle nose to grab and pull. Grab, pull, cut. Because I can't quite get them with my fingers. I've also gone back to I feel like the perfect combination for prepping your tires, you have used things in the past like Rio, Griot's rubber prep. Um, and then I've been using stoners for a number of years, but I always did it wet. Now, these are new tires, so I'm doing it dry. The remainder of like the wheel, the soap that they use here will come off. Here shortly it'll come it'll come off when we when we wash it for the first time what I got a couple of paper towels take my terminator try to keep from spraying it all over the room I'm getting in your way here I get better this side I do an initial wipe with a paper towel just get the real nasty stuff off first so I don't ruin my microfiber and we're going to follow with some microfiber. So I use mineral spirits for a little while, but I find that that tends to dry out the, the rubber. This is like the perfect combination of aggressive enough to get it really clean, but not so aggressive. And I think this leaves a little bit of something behind, but whatever it is, is a magical magical combo this and carpro pearl to prepare this to accept pearl for the long term i might be making that up but it sure seems to work well so although this cleans pretty well it seems to leave a little bit of a an oil substance behind that is Super compatible with, with Pearl. Okay, so I got the bulk of the junk off. Take the towel here. I can usually do about two tires per tile per towel. And then I can get more aggressive. If you get too aggressive with a paper towel, you're just gonna kill the towel. So I hit the bead. Come back. I really want to get in there as deep as I can. I'm not going to get all of it, but I get most of it. So I'm getting the, the, the bead, and I'm also getting the wheel, the edge, the lip of the wheel here from all the, the junk from the mounting. We're going to follow with the racer here in a minute. And I'm going to take and do one more aggressive wiping of the tires 
get them all set up. Gosh, I feel like a darn mad scientist with all this crap I've got. We got pallets of Meguiar's over there, new products. We got pallets of hyperdressing and we got crap everywhere. Got the entire place next door filled. I got all these parts for the M5. We got an AR630 behind me right here. It's like never ending. So what I'm gonna do here today, this wasn't part of my plan. I'm kind of ahead of, the, ahead of schedule here but uh, I got tired of polishing and uh, so I grabbed the wheels and started prepping them for coating and then I was oh well I'm already rolling on this so I might as well get moving on these to get the first coat so I'm going to finish the wheels tomorrow morning so we're going to jump ahead where I normally am at this point and get these suckers coated and done and prepared to put on the car. Then I just wipe the back. I'm not worried about the back too much. I'm mainly hitting the lip of the wheel. I'm just kind of cleaning it up a little bit here, cleaning the tire up, the bulk of it. I just want to get that extra soap off of the, off the wheel area. Okay. So then what I'm gonna do is drench this down with some eraser. This will get me prepared. Now these are new. Seems like a, I think this is the fifth or sixth wheel cleaning video I've done here in the last couple of months with all these M cars and then changing wheels and trying different things. But if you were doing new wheels, you wouldn't, or I'm sorry, used wheels or older wheels, and you were preparing to coat, you probably wouldn't be able to do it this way where I'm just simply wiping down with a racer. You, you would probably have to get a clay bar out and really prepare maybe do some iron removing as well. Since these are brand new, all I need to do is just make sure all the oils, especially from that spraying of the tires there, make sure that's all cleaned off. And then I've got a bunch of polish all over them from the application of the M101 doing the polishing of the car. So I'm kind of doing these out of turn here. I'm going to do the inside of the wheel. I'm going to come back and do the front again here with the racer. Flip this around. <clears throat> I want to get this nice and clean. This is the wheel that was on the car, so has a lot more polish dust than the other wheels have or had. This is my last one. So I want to get crystal serum light on this so it can sit and cure overnight. And then tomorrow morning I can knock out my exo coats and the wheels will be ready to go for whenever I get to, the, to that point. I'm really looking at I need to find a powder coater. I think there's a really good powder coater in Leesburg, but I can't find them online. So I'm gonna to try to find them tonight. And I may take, I'm probably gonna take the calipers off and go have those powder, powder coated. This thing keeps breaking. It's been a long day, it's like four o'clock. Been working on this car all day. A little bit here and there. Went and designed a couple of garages, had some people stop in from, uh, from Denver, come visit, lots going on. <clears throat> so this thing needs to get, ah, da, hot spot. I almost didn't make this video because you've seen me do this a bunch here lately. I think uh, 
I think I'm gonna hit this one more. I'm pumped, I'm gonna have the wheels done. I wasn't even thinking about having them mounted and then I forgot that I made the appointment yesterday. Knocked it out. God dang it. So my source garage thing here, not holding up so well. It keeps falling. I've been liking doing the other side first. I think what I'm gonna do is flip this. Figure, now I can't get it off. There, that should be better. That's probably smarter. That's probably why it kept falling off. Just had the roller on backwards. <clears throat> kind of developed the system that works best. I like doing the back side first, following up the front. CSL is not layerable, so we're just doing a single, single coat. Just using one of these little, I have a bunch of CarPro suede towels that I've just been cutting just to get rid of them. That was back when I bought like a case of suede towels back when we needed that to level some of the original coatings. You needed to level it, the suede towel. So you would follow the application with a suede towel and then use a you know, plush towel to finish off, wiping off the extra residue. You just don't need, really need that anymore. So I've been using, it's the same suede that we use on applicators. So I've just been cutting them and using one piece at a time for like a junk application like this on the wheels. Instead of using the pre-cut more expensive ones. So this will darken up the wheel a little bit, but it won't shine up the wheel at all. So you don't have to be too concerned with that. So it darkens because these are satin. They're not matte, but they're satin. Matte would be the same thing. You could, you could use this on a matte wheel. You just can never polish it off. That's the risk. But it won't, it won't make it shiny. It just makes it darker. And then it'll make water behavior work better and all that, all that good stuff you want. And this is pretty much wipe on, wipe off. By the time I get done with this, I'm ready to level it and wipe this. These are one of my green towels. These work fantastically well for coating, coating, leveling or removal or excess wiping, whatever you want to call it. So I'm not using a lot of pressure. I'm just kind of moving the towel, just wiping the towel, getting it to flatten out, make sure there aren't any high spots. Then a high spot would just be a, in this case, just a shiny spot, which would be just extra product left over. Okay, flip this around. And we'll finish the job. For you guys, this is all, only the first video for me. This is the fourth wheel. So I've been doing the each one of these I seem to be doing a little differently, but I'm doing the, the, the wheel lip here first. And then I'm coming back and I'm doing the face and the little crack here. And then we'll go and do the individual inner sides of the spokes. I don't know why, it just seems Nice and organized that way. And even on these satin wheels, I mean, you don't need to load this on as long as you you can see it on the black, as long as you're getting it fully covered and it looks relatively, and I think e using the word even is kind of a bad and confusing word when you're talking to coding, but it's just, you got it all, it's all covered. You know, there's, there's stuff on the entire surface. And wheels are easy to miss spots. So for me, the whole XO coat, like CSL is not layerable, but the XO part, the main advantage to me is that I end up with filling in any spots that I missed. But the main purpose of it is that you end up with, uh, it's better with, uh, it's more hydrophobic than this is. You know, CSL is a little slicker but XO adds some little bit of depth to the look of it, and then adds adds the uh, 
hydrophobics that most people are looking for. I don't care so much about hydro, how water behaves, I care more about how dirt behaves. And then I like, see, I think the slicker the coating, I think the less scratch prone you are. So I'm not so concerned about bull crap, talking about hardness and all that stuff. I want it to be super slick because then I feel like my towels will glide across it better and just seems to scratch less since coatings really don't they're not as it's not the it's not the hardness of the coating that helps so much with the scratching it's the uh, slickness or the surface tension that helps with the scratching by being able to just you know a towel or a wash pad or a brush can glide over it a little easier so that's what I'm generally looking for more than anything. Shoot, me trying to stay out of the way. The camera's actually made this an even better angle. So the XO application is identical. We use the same towels, we use the same process, we use the same procedure. Everything is identical to what I'm doing here. It won't look any different to you on camera, but I don't have to do any prep, so I don't want to wipe down with eraser or anything because I'm already, I've already got my coating on here and I don't want to, you know, if I can help it, I don't want to compromise the coating. I want to let it, you know, give as much time as possible before I get any water or anything on it. So I'll spare you the, the pain of watching me do the same thing over and over again. But the XO coat is the same, but I, I think the XO coat is really worth it. I feel like you're gonna get a lot more longevity. I don't really know, but I feel like my wager is that I'm gonna get some more longevity out of it. And it's gonna do a little better with dirt because of its even less surface, surface tension. That's just my thoughts. Just gonna follow here and make sure this is all good. So I'm able to really see it from the light as I roll it. And I'll check it from a couple other angles and then we're done. And look at it from the front. Notice this little crack here has been a spot that I've missed the coating. Yeah, everything looks good. Last step is put some uh, pearl on. Normally I'd use a spray bottle, but I don't have any in a bottle here. And I'm impatient, I gotta get to the gym. But we're just gonna paint it on. And Normally I would wait if I wasn't trying to wrap up this video for you here. Normally I would wait on this until tomorrow because I don't want to get the coating wet if I can help it. Oh shoot, just poured it all over the floor. Take my towel, wipe the excess, and we have a coated, protected, dressed, nice satin looking. So this is diluted one to one. So. 50% water, 50% pearl. I find pearl does better on tires than hyperdressing. So I like pearl on my tires. And then again, since I prep the tire, I never really need to get aggressive with cleaning. I can just leave it and just clean it with uh, with a PNS Brake Buster or Adams Rubber and Tire Cleaner and call it a day. So there you go, it looks darn good. And we'll call this episode six, prepping the wheels and tires for awesomeness. Anyway, thanks for watching this episode. More episodes to come as we uh, continue to work through the M5's uh, detail series, as well as some minor modifications like putting black wheels on it. Thanks for watching. As always, stay tuned for more crazy. Mm -hmm.